All right, just a quick little uh, run through of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. It's uh, definitely not that great. And I am really not uh, keen on the Seth Rogen humour here. So what happens? The film follows our heroes as they're constantly disobeying their father Splinter, voiced by Jackie Chan, who has forbidden them from ever interacting with humans. They bump into some BLM gender studies reject pretending to be April O'Neil because you got to tick those woke boxes for anyone who isn't your Chinese overlord, especially in the toy department. Fake April wants to be a reporter and Leo thinks she's hot for some reason. Yeah, lay off the absinthe, mate. So April gets the film... Sorry. April gets them to take on some criminals just so she can film it and make it look like she came across it by accident. Which is very dishonest and narcissistic, by the way. CNN and the BBC would love her. Oh, and there's some mutated bugs that hit humans with its leader, Superfly, voiced by Ice Cube. I really wanted to give this movie a chance, but it's a really fucking huge mess. Now, don't get me wrong, the turtles themselves are fine but I couldn't really distinguish them from their personality. Leo does still come across as the leader, and Donnie still comes across as the intellectual geek. Michelangelo and Ralph come across way too similar. They mention Ralph having a temper, yet I am constantly seeing him smiling all the time. In the original interpretations, you got who they were and what their personalities were, and that was from the dialogue, specifically given to each character you know, depending on their personality. There's a mixed message about overcoming your prejudice, but I do like how the mutants, the turtles and Splinter and the people of New York end up working together at the end. But there's still some problems, and as much as I love Jackie Chan, as much as I love the Easter eggs, especially his fight scenes, which pay homage to his awesome stunts from his past films, I do not feel him as Splinter. When I think of Splinter, he should come across as a wise old master, as well as a father figure. While he does come across more of an overprotective grouch without... But he doesn't have any wisdom whatsoever. Okay, despite his prejudice with humans and overcoming his bigotry, his redemption was still kind of... kind of all over the place. Save people and record it so more people will love you. And no, sorry, that's really selfish. You should have been teaching the turtles to save people because it's the right thing to do, not for personal gain. And why did we have to have Splinter spit swapping with another male changed to female at the last minute bug? I don't want to see Splinter in any sexual context. So no, this is not for kids. It's not suitable for kids. I don't care what screen rants say. Fake April never seems to learn or grow into a better person by the end. She's still selfish, out for her own personal gain and devoid of any likeable characteristics. And she has a really, really disgusting vomit scene that goes on way too long. And I don't always mind that. It can be very funny. Family Guy, for example. But this this was just uh, really going overboard. April in the original movies was a lot more better. When she covered her stories, it was to shed light on the rise in crime destroying her city. In fact, Leo is the only one I felt that became a better person, or turtle by the end. And when Mega Superfly invades the Big Apple, Leo is determined to stop him, even at the cost of his life. So that's one of the things I did like. <clears throat> a lot of people complain about them learning Jitsu from TV, which is stupid, I know, but in the comics, Splinter learned ninjutsu from a battered old pamphlet. But I'm still trying to question the moral message this film was trying to push. All I can see is do things for your own self-gratification. I mean, the tales in the other shows and movies were a little immature and childish, but they were still good-hearted and disciplined and knew what was morally right, thanks to Splinter. It's In the end, it's dull, clunky, unfunny and a little disheartening. In fact, if you want to watch a better Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that contains a jokey splinter and a race swapped April that's actually done well, then I highly recommend Netflix's Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It's not perfect, it takes liberties with the law, and April is still a little flat, but it did have a big epic story with great character development 
and it really felt like the stakes were high, making you care what happens. So avoid this and rewatch both the animated 80s or 2000 reboot, the 1990s movie, the Batman v Turtles crossover, and what I just mentioned earlier. Maybe even TMNT 2007. So that's my quick thoughts. And right now, whether you beautiful bastards are Northern English or not, thanks for watching. And please remember to like and subscribe. But right now, that's me done, and I'm off to the pub. <laughs>